before we get really philosophical, I think we should answer the very simple question just for anyone who <laughs> might have clicked this and has no idea what's going on. What is NixOS? Just at that initial question. And I'm sure that can take us in a lot of directions, but at a high level, mm. what is this distro? And then also what is the Nix package manager? Because this can be used separately from the distro itself. Uh, I think I would go for for like describing what is the typical Nick Linux distro? <laughs> How does that work? My first Linux distro experience was when I was about 16. And it, that was, what it was, uh, 2003 something. <laughs> and and it's been, until, to the, until now, it's greatly improved <laughs> in all sorts of ways. But the premise is that I have an install, I, have, I boot something, a live, uh, back then I booted a live CD. <laughs> now we don't do that anymore. And then you install it. And then we start making modifications. Mm -hmm. We install some other service, some other desktop environment. We go into our settings and, and configure it. I remember that uh, recent PewDiePie video that I'm so happy about that we get so much uh, exposure and so many people will learn about Linux that there is an alternative and that it's, mm -hmm. it's finally not so hard and not so far-fetched to use it. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that it's so easy. But the problem is that it, it, it's, it's not very maintainable, right? right? We make these modifications to our, to, our, to our systems, but what, the way I like I said, we don't get to keep them. We just get to, we just get to make them. And, uh, so then there are solutions to these problems. Um, get a collection of my dot files in my home directory and put it in a, in a Git repository. Use uh, some sort of a backup scheme. And, and those solutions, they, they typically work to some degree. Um, but it's, it's, not, it's not optimal. It's, mm -hmm. it's not optimal. And that's where all this talk about build systems, that's where, that's where this is a game changer. Mm -hmm. NixOS is built. It's, it's a product of, of a build system, the entire thing. It's a, from the top level, my OS, mm -hmm. to the dot files in my home directory, it is one big tree of dependencies. And that there's a lot of uh, uh, practical value that we can talk about. That is a product of that mm -hmm. that approach. It's a big tree of dependencies. This was something we did touch on with Tristan, where in Nick in, in NixOS. Everything is managed under the Nix system as opposed to what you would have with a regular distro where things are sort of spread out across everywhere in your system. Like on Arch, if I wanted to go change some little system configuration file, there will be a tool to do it. There's a file somewhere, but it's probably going to be consistent across distros. But the way that you interact with it isn't going to be consistent. And trying to replicate a system onto another one with something like Arch or something like Ubuntu, there are ways to do it, but it's not something built into the core structure of what the distro is. Right. The workflow... I mean, though... Go ahead. Well, I was, there's one more, and it's like, what's tough is like, but which way do you want to tackle NixOS? And, and this is like the conundrum, mm -hmm. like outside in or inside out. You know, outside in, I think it, you, you sometimes fail to see the, the marvel. And then inside out, like starting with Nix, it's like you get bogged down in the details. Right, right, right. But there's like one important distinction with NixOS is um, <clears throat> all these other distros, 
those collections of common folders, you know, Etsy, lib, bin, user bin, it's called the FHS, the file system hierarchy standard. So that's like <clears throat> some standard that most distros follow. And the, the central problem that Nix is trying to solve is folders have a small key space. What do I mean by key space is like, you can only have one name under a folder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want library gung ho. I can only have like lib gung ho once. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could put like version one, two, three, but let's say I want like version one at this commit, you know, it has to have that name. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of underlying things that qu require that. And we can, dive deeper into that, but like Nix solves that. Mm -hmm. And Nix OS lets you take a collection of packages and construct a distribution mm -hmm. with, you know, and then like goes even further and lets you do that with Nix the language. So it gets like even more insane, mm -hmm. but like a distribution, the thesis, which is pretty readable, <clears throat> at least the first half, that wasn't an insult to Ilko. Sorry, I just like the first half is much more readable. Mm -hmm. Talks about how to build software. And then he just layers and he says like, well, once you know how to deliver a file, mm -hmm. once I could build a file, Linux's beauty, Unix is saying everything's a file. Mm -hmm. And then a distribution is just a collection of files. So if I can just create a package, which is a package of packages, well, that's a distribution. So if you can build one package in Nix, you can build a package of packages and a distribution is just a package of packages. I mean, everything about how Linux works is files. You wanna run systemd, but these systemd configuration files in Etsy, you wanna do something else, put this file here in Etsy. So it's, all, it's just like files on disk at very specific places and you're done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know, yeah. No, I, I, I so think OS, oh, go on. Sorry? Yeah, I was going to say, NixOS at its core, I think, is a collection of files. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe Don can go into more. It's like, I think then it goes really, I think where people have the problem with it is that it needs this new language because you right. also configure it. You don't have to. Right? I think that's just like the current status quo. Mm -hmm. You have to use the Nix language and it, is likely off-putting to many people because it's f functional and that's, mm -hmm. you know, very different than a, a typical imperative way of thinking, especially when you think of like more advanced functional concepts like um, <clears throat> infinite recursions and stuff like that. So for anyone who might not have um, as much of a programming background, can you just explain the difference between imperative and a functional approach? I'd say there's there's three. There's I want to draw a distinction. There's imperative, mm -hmm. and then there's declarative, which is like, and then there is, um, I think imperative programming can be also uh, functional and, and non-functional. Mm -hmm. There's like a, a couple of like different joint sets. So imperative programming is like when you do a line by line, and it's like how you might think of running through a list of tasks, and they're temporal. So like a task earlier on has to be done before the task after it, and you're just running through a sequence. Declarative programming, if someone has ever heard of SQL, that's like writing a list of tasks, not even a task, you're writing what you want done mm -hmm. and you're le leaving it up to the thing, the computer, the person, whatever, to go execute your plan. Mm -hmm. So you might say, instead of like how to make a burrito, all the different steps, you just say like, give me a burrito. Mm -hmm. And it's up to them to figure out all the beauty, you know? And the beautiful thing is you've just articulate what you want and you store it and you say, I just want a burrito. And you really don't care about all the other, the actual steps in the order. Maybe they want to put rice first or beans. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So that's declarative. People love declarative because you get to the root of what the problem is and you don't get bogged down in the steps. And you, and then you can optimize, you like decouple the ask of the the request and the steps to do it. And then someone who's like an expert in planning or whatever can go off and, and do that. Mm -hmm. um, functional programming is a different way of doing, <clears throat> I'd say imperative programming. And the key distinction is um, you try not to use state. Mm -hmm. 
every line is almost, um, they like to use the word pure. Mm -hmm. Pure meaning it re relies on no state. So you can like shuffle these lines in any order and still get the same outcome. Would, that's, that's functional programming at its core. I don't know. It's, these are hard concepts to kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, and, and, and some computer science laureate is probably like, yelling at a cloud as he hears me oh i know I, I there i have at least a couple of um haskell fans in my in my viewership 